But yes, we want to talk about the Kyoto Animation uh, anime film A Silent Voice, which all of us saw this weekend, or this week rather, um, and um, it was uh, all of our first time seeing it. I've read the manga, um, so I can speak to the manga if anyone has any questions about that, uh, and I do have a few ideas there away. Oh. Um, but uh, let's first start off by just talking a little bit about um, kind of uh, what were you kind of what was your overall reaction to the film? I um, I loved it. Um, this is uh, you and I were kind of talking a little bit mm. to this last night. I'm gonna actually have to make room on my top ten list of of really wow. anime that i really enjoyed loved and i think that other people should watch this is mm -hmm. something worthwhile mm -hmm. um and as as emotionally hard as this movie is it, and it is hard mm. um um it's 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 worth it there, there's the payout i felt was 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 very much worth it and yeah. i think that you know steal yourself before you watch this because you're you're, you're gonna need to but definitely watch this this is this is definitely worthwhile mm. Worth the time, worth the effort. Yep. Good job. Certainly, certainly. Um, in all fairness, I have seen it once before. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Right. Um, when when it first was available mm -hmm. uh, for general viewing, I found a, found a, the copy of it to be able to watch it. So okay. this was the and given the quality of the film, this experience of going back and like take you know trying to actually take some decent notes mm -hmm. and sort of try to deconstruct some of what's going on in the background of the whole film mm -hmm. i was as emotionally moved the second time wow. as i was the first time good so it was like i'm sitting here just you know doing the <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like i did the first time it's like that to me is the power of a really well done film is that you yeah. you not only can you go back for some critical review but while you're trying to be critical, mm. I, I mean, and criticality as in uh, certain characters um, that I've got notes here all about mm. Shoya and Shoko, uh, some of the side okay. characters about mm -hmm. what they represent and how they fit in and what this is. You know, it's a sort of an alternate uh, hero journey. Mm hmm. Yeah, and you know it, it hits the points of the hero's journey, and like so, you know stuff like that. And yet I'm still crying and writing these notes down, <laughs> and I'm just like, I know. Wow. I, I'm I'm dreading already, even though I love it. I I'm dreading watching the waiting for the uh, the second time that I watch this to do the same thing to mm -hmm. to catch the things that I didn't catch before, yeah. and um and try to watch this in more critical. But at least I'll, I'll, I'll be armed and prepared. It's kind of like watching a Pixar movie when you see Up for the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what happens, and you're okay, and you, you can get through it. And right. now, now I'm hearing from you, of course, that you know, I'm still probably going to go, you're <laughs> such a little jerk. You're such a little jerk. That I, I had been having it, to work through that to go, okay, this is what he's doing, and mm -hmm. this is his journey. Right. This is what, you know. But, and it's, yeah. it's in part of that, that the the you already know by the second time you've seen it you already know what's going to happen but it still right. sets off in you internally mm -hmm. what's well, what mean, goes on with you so it's mm -hmm. like it's such an interesting sort of meld together where it's like yeah i know what he's doing i know he's an ass you know i know he's going to do these stupid things mm -hmm. but right. gosh you know did i do that yeah you know yeah. Was, right. was yeah. is this... how many how many how many times how many mm -hmm. times did you feel yeah like you know yeah. when i was in yeah. elementary school and some kid wore like you know really goofy shirt his like parents bought him mm -hmm. you know did was i that person was i yeah. like hey, nice shirt that's our ugly clothes be like oh mm -hmm. oh well, how come you don't have any ocean pacific t-shirts <laughs> yeah. well it makes me think of when uno ueno san Hmm. When she says to Sahara, when she's walking with Shoko in the hallway, and she says, "Oh, her clothes are ugly," mm -hmm. and it's just like, oh, yeah. you know, you feel do you feel all those little cuts and in your yeah, mind? yeah, and, um, and you just kind of, and that was that was part of the hard part was yeah. feeling, feeling those cuts and just going, and then you know, for some people, it's going to be those cuts of, did I act that way? Was I bad towards someone? Mm -hmm. And then. You know, then the flip side of it is, 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 you know, remembering how young you are and in that, you know, at that frame of mind mm -hmm. and just, and just 
and just how everything's magnified and how everything yeah. feels so bad. Right. And you, you and you, you know, you mm -hmm. kind of remember those moments in your life, particularly when you're in eighth grade or sixth grade, mm -hmm. when you're just becoming a teenager and you go, the world is just crap. It's a crap yeah. ball right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but this, but then it's mitigated by the fact that, you know, you're not dealing with these particular sets of issues necessarily sure. um i i yeah. I'm in, and I, I also think it it not only does it touch on those things that you know that you've done mm. but also if you think about the uh uh nagasuka the kid who has like yep. the uh the my hero academy of hair yeah mm. hair yeah um if you think about when his bike's being stolen yeah mm -hmm. and people just yeah and he's crying for help yep and Shoya is tortured to respond. Mm -hmm. And his instinct is to walk away. Away. Yeah, right. And it's like that, you know what I mean? So that mm -hmm. touches on the the thousand little cuts of was I a bad person doing things? Mm. Or yeah. in the alternative, was I also a bad person so not a good person mm. not a neutral person but mm. was i also a bad person by not doing something yeah. to actively help and, somebody who needed help and, and it's and, just like oh god it's hitting you from both directions <laughs> and that's one of the things i think is so brilliant about the story's portrayal of that bullying the fact that it wasn't simply you know evil bully versus innocent victim everybody was involved in some level you know, passively that's, or actively. And that's what I really liked about that. Um, this, this particular story was that that was real. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you don't see it at, at that moment, but after uh, Shoya is, is basically demonized yeah. and he's looking around and he's like, wait a minute, you and you, and mm -hmm. everyone just went, mm, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know? uh -huh. yep. and, and, and they did that to him and it would last for years. Mm -hmm. And then, you come to find out that damn near everybody in that group at that moment, at that time, with that one deaf girl, is all doing the same thing, really, that he's doing it just in different mm -hmm. degrees. And for him, it's for Shoya, it's the it's the ultimate degree of just like, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump off the bridge yeah. at the beginning of the anime. Mm -hmm. And and But for each one of them, it's their own little journey of trying to get back to this. And he's just kind of like the nucleus of this, of, mm -hmm. of all yeah. these people in. Well, and, I mean, it is it is the hero's journey because yeah. there's the trial, there's the expiation, there is the return. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's yep. that classical mm -hmm. piece. Um, and, and and the the what we all experience in different phases in our lives, whether it's school or work or other, mm -hmm. but you know the broader you know social social psycho uh, idea of the in group versus mm -hmm. the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you right. know, and that you have that as a much more raw, a primitive response in yeah. elementary school. Oh yeah. Because what is unfamiliar yeah. other, you don't have the cognitive tools in order to, in, to engage that in a meaningful way so that you end up that your in group is the group that excludes the other mm -hmm. and then persecutes them if that person is not strong enough to stand up to that. And this is one of the amazing things is that, you know, we've certainly seen, you know, stories about bullies, either, you know, direct school bullies or, you know, uh, the gang or whatever. Um, when was the last time you saw any work that is about the redemption of the bully? Where this this is, you know, I mean, he was the instigator of all this. He was a kid, so, yeah. you know, you understand it. Yeah. But still, I mean, he that was very much it. And this is about him realizing, wow, I really was a terrible person and I should do something about that. It's, it's and I really think it's amazing. interesting that at, at that moment, right before everything goes downhill for Shoya, there's that moment 
where he, if he just acted, he, he, I mean, obviously, yeah. if he had acted quickly enough, then this movie would have gone from two hours and nine minutes to 15. <laughs> right. But, you know, well, he, isn't this what I always say is like, if you're a writer, you're terrible at it because <laughs> I, you could resolve the entire plot within right. like 10 minutes. Be like, ta da, mm-hmm. it's done. He's better now. We're all but good. Show yeah, but is, no, is, no. is starting to get out of his seat and yeah. his hand is trembling to, mm-hmm. to raise it and say, yeah, look, me, I was, I, it was. Please, yeah, it, it was me. It was I yeah. was the thing, and he never gets the chance. And and this and, is the and they they all took it away from them. And this is one of the interesting things, though, is that you know he goes to to take um uh to take responsibility, and immediately responsibility is put on him, right? Yeah. Like you know, right. I, I saw that or I, I read that scene initially, but then I was, I was watching thinking, I remember how, how does this work out? Um, and I was like, is somebody else going to stand up and say, show you did it? Right, um, or is this going to um, drag out? Because in in the manga, it actually goes a little bit longer, where they say, "Look, these hearing aids are effing expensive. Yeah, this is a big deal. You're you know yeah. you you are in trouble. Whoever this is, this is not just a matter yeah. of whatever. Eight of them in five months. Yeah, um, and yeah, there's a whole I mean, other like a thing whole... going on there. Um, yeah, and um, and and so I, I love the fact that even if he had taken responsibility. That scene might have played out basically the same, because the teacher would have basically said, yeah. "Oh yeah, well we know it was you all along anyway," you know, and everyone else would have piled on, um, and so he didn't even get the opportunity for redemption, despite yeah. being this you know eleven year old. But I mean, in all it, it, it you know not in all fairness, yeah. but <laughs> looking at generally the way Ueno and. As much as later on, it's not kawaii, it's kawaii, mm. K-A-W-A-I, kawaii. Mm. kawaii. Um, you know what? She is just as as much in that boat as Ueno is. Yeah. You know, the whole, <laughs> oh, you made her cry now. It's like, mm-hmm. dude, oh, yeah. you manipulated that entirely. Mm-hmm. Not by oh I'm just an elementary school kid and I don't understand what's going on and I'm crying mm-hmm. which you know there's yep. plenty of things you've seen that before where somebody gets yelled at and they start crying because they're a kid mm-hmm. that was purposeful manipulation mm-hmm. and yep. she ends up you know in a connective point with Shoya mm-hmm. when he was aware of that manipulative yeah. move she made mm-hmm. and yet peels the the X off of her personage mm-hmm. to engage this person, despite the fact you know exactly the kind of person she is, and she yeah. is not in in any form or fashion like Ueno. She doesn't show any sort of remorse or yeah. any sort of particular uh, awareness or you know self analysis of mm-hmm. what she's done to to sort of internalize her actions mm-hmm. in the way that Shoya does. So you know, I want to talk about this. Um, because I want to talk about Nauka, the girl with long yeah. black hair. The the yeah yeah. Um, one of the things that surprised me the most about this this story, both anime and manga, is the fact that she remains in their group. Because she is the most unrepentant of them all. She is the one who most bullied Shoko, and she is the one who is who still doesn't like her. And still won't spend, you know, um, just kind oh. of, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's Ueno, Ueno. Oh, yeah, That's Ueno, what okay, I'm yeah, looking yeah. for. Like, wait a minute. I've heard hey, sorry, I was, I'm, okay. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm thinking first names. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. My yeah, bad. It's fine. My bad. Um, Go ahead. And I know I kind of resisted that, the idea that she really needed to, you know, be punished in some way. But ultimately, this is a story of forgiveness. Right, that that is the ultimate thing that everyone is looking for, really, in some way in this story, and ultimately the characters I think are kind of like, you know, I don't like that about you, but ultimately we can look past that and still have a relationship with you. And I also appreciate the fact that in the film it shows that she's learning sign language at the very end. Yes. To give yeah. that hint that okay, there's something Which... going on in her head. Now you've got what is it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Baka. <laughs> yeah, Baka. <laughs> no, no. Actually, um, it's this. It, yeah. No, 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 I can't do that. I don't have. I don't I have the magic. The reason why it, 
I think it's the reason why the, the it's so palatable for her to still be that way through the through the course of the movie mm-hmm. is for me that the sense I got from her, she was wrong. She was a bully. She did all these things, and part of it for me was the discussion she had with uh, Shoka, mm-hmm. uh, Shoka on the on the Ferris wheel, where she was flat out honest. She, and she was, except for the very beginning, honest about this whole thing about yeah. how she felt about it, how she felt yeah. about the girl, didn't like her, felt that this girl was taking stuff away from her. And, you know, just just outright never really lied about how she felt mm-hmm. about it, about yeah. the whole situation. She hated the fact that she kept, uh, Shoka kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. And he's just like, why are you saying you're sorry all the time? Mm. I'm sorry, too. I got crap going on in my head. This, this is the Ferris wheel conversation. Yeah. I've got crap going yeah. on in my head. I've got all this crap that I'm going through, too. All right, there's stuff that I am dealing with over here, and it sucks. And I understand that you have something going on that sucks, but I still hate you. There's a certain mm-hmm. level of honesty, and I think that yeah. the entire group understands that. Mm-hmm. And I think she's, and I think for her, the forgiveness is the, what she's asking, what she's really looking for, is the one moment when, as she's sitting next to to Shoya in entry school, where she could have just said, "Well, yeah, he's the ringleader, but you know what." Mm-hmm. You know, me, this person, this person, and yeah. this person, or at least very herself saying, "Yeah, I was in on it too." Mm-hmm. And I think that's what she's apologizing for. She's yeah. apologizing for her own part of the whole mess, right. mm-hmm. and that's what the, why the group is understanding of her and, and bringing her in. But mm-hmm. you no, know, I'll, I'll be honest. I'd, I'd be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna keep it." <laughs> Get away from that, you know. I'm just, well, I mean, exactly. and that's the thing is like, for where you have this show is sin and redemption. Mm-hmm. It is not very poignantly addressing the issue of absolute forgiveness. Oh. You can oh. have Shoya oh. redeem himself, mm-hmm. but what wow. is blatantly clear is he cannot undo what he has done right yeah and he lived with that burden and as much as shoko likes him Mm -hmm. and you know now is starting to to understand more about him he cannot undo the damage he did Mm -hmm. when he looks at her one ear with one hearing aid and looks at the other with a scar (laughs) with a scar Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. that is a consistent and constant reminder (laughs) that he can seek forgiveness but Mm -hmm. redemption is your journey yeah Exactly. Somebody who is, yeah. you know, going to forgive you one. However, you live with the fact that you have made an an unchangeable path change for those people. You know what I mean? Yep. You have adjusted the way that their lives are going to go, and there's nothing you can do to stop that. It, it's one thing that um, obviously they didn't have time to get into in the, in the anime film, but in the in the manga, they get into uh, Shoko's mother, um, the the battle axe. Oh, yeah. Very, um, very interesting character. I thought. Yeah, um, and they, I mean, I, that is I ex- love his mother. You know what I mean? I wish they had done more with 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 her mother. Her mother, yeah, 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 mother. yeah. Um, Shoko, Shoko, yeah, not yeah, Shoya. <laughs> yeah, um, because one of the things they they kind of get into later on in the manga is that she has spent the past 12, 15, 18 years of her life battling with a world that is at best indifferent to and at worst yeah. actively against her daughter. Um, yeah. Since this is, we're in spoiler mode here, um, the reason she's raising Shoko and Yuzu on her own is because her husband's family divorced her for having a deaf girl. Right. There is a term for people born with deformities, deaf, blind, mm. and it's not a good term. And I'm and I'm blanking on the term, and that's fine because it's not a very good term. <laughs> yeah. And it's 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 um. But it, there is a, and it's and it's pervasive. It's still around today where there's a discrimination. Yeah. It's, it's outright discrimination mm-hmm. uh, for people like that. Yeah. And so you know that's one of the things that I kind of, as I was watching the movie, uh, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that we used to do in our theaters that uh, we set aside the performance for deaf patrons. Oh, nice. Have, NSL, uh people doing sign in a part of the the theater so that the the deaf patrons could see that as they're watching the show. Nice. 
But, you know, that's our society today. And what they're dealing with in Japan is completely different. And yeah. there is, and I think part of it has to, and, I, and, and if anybody really knows this for, you know, in detail, mm. correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I think part of it is, is that it makes you different. And that's the yeah. whole point mm -hmm. is that it makes you right. different. And it's okay to excel, but it's not okay to excel to be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, again, that's the yeah. that's the in group versus the other. Mm -hmm. It's like having you know having different colored hair is not make does not sufficiently gravitate you into the other. Right. <laughs> but having a physical disability of a handicap mm -hmm. of that sort, mm -hmm. um, and I, I I hope this is changing. I hope that that, that you know this the society of, of, of the world is changing towards mm -hmm. it, but. Um, a, a better and a more un enlightened understanding of the, you know, people who are, their abilities are not determined necessarily whether they can hear or they can see they, mm -hmm. they, you know, they're still people. Mm -hmm. um, right. But, you know, I remember years ago reading stuff that said Japan still was lagging behind in hmm. dealing with services rendered to people who had various handicaps, that it was mm -hmm. still very clearly sort of under the carpet and kind of, just you know don't pay attention to it it'll be fine there's an article i read so i'm i'm not speaking for it but who described right. this there's a there's a manga that came out a while back about a woman uh who had a son born on the autism spectrum and the challenges of that and said one of the difficulties is in a society that um that very much rewards um fitting in with a group when you are by who you are inconveniencing people right like they have to do things differently to interact with you there's kind of a, a fundamental sort of problem there right? that, that becomes difficult fundamentally for the person right. saying I, you know i feel bad because i can't just be an average person i have to constantly ask people to write in my notebook or whatever yeah, shoko's notebook. Right. Yeah. notebook yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um and it's tough um, so yeah, that's, that's going to be, that, that, that was a really interesting thing. Um, uh, I also found it really interesting, um, um, some of the, the, the overall, just sort of the, the overall direction and editing of, of the work. Um, mm -hmm. given this is a seven volume manga, this movie never felt rushed. Um, no. oh, you know, no. it, it felt like a really, the pacing really... was perfect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and especially in, in a story where you are taking your time with scenes, you know, when you are taking, you know, spending time with them on the bridge, you know, this is, this is something, this is not an action movie. Like you have to really soak in some of these sequences. Um, and with all, there's a lot of characters. That was one of the best things about this movie is that, uh, even though I was joking, that was two hours, and, two hours <laughs> and nine minutes and you're crying through two hours of it. Um, mm. It was never boring. It never, yes. you know, there was, ne there was never a point where you weren't vested. There wasn't never a point where you were just like, okay, I think I can go and, and get my pocky now and just walk away and come back, <laughs> right. you know. Be back and, in 15 minutes. Uh, right, exactly. I'm gonna, yeah, you don't need to pause it. I'll, I'll, I'll be back <laughs> kind of thing. You didn't need to do that. And and the way that the, they alternated the cuts, mm. um, you know, sometimes the cuts were nice and gentle and some of them were purposely abrupt and yes. you know to, and it to cause particularly towards the end and you know i don't want to give away any spoilers but you know when shoko decides we're in spoiler yeah, territory yeah. go for it sports, okay yeah when shoko decides to kill herself exit the I, scene I, I, exit, yeah. the, exit scene. the scene <laughs> exit the scene during the fireworks and nobody oh. can figure it out but you know it because of the pacing and the music yep. and what's going on mm -hmm. and I, I and i'll tell you i was on the edge of my sofa going no 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 don't you don't you don't make me hate you don't do that don't mm -hmm. do that and yep. part of it was just because of the pacing and you know and like part of it is she's slowly getting up onto the yeah. to the yeah. ledge mm -hmm. and then you see show you just kind of walking up the, up the stairs mm -hmm. and you're like screaming at the television <laughs> run you dumb idiot run she's about to go Take Take your Don't shoes act. off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, I understand your leisurely attitude. You can wear the shoes in the house. Just do this. Just, what? just move. And, it, but that, but yeah. that's the whole point is that yeah. all that action or lack thereof mm -hmm. does that. 
and the other part of it was was for me were all the bridge scenes all the the, mm. the, the koi pond scenes where i just thought that was beautifully rendered i just mm. i thought if you ever ask me about the perfect integration of cgi animation and drawn animation this is what i'm going to think of mm. right now mm -hmm. is are those scenes and how they're just very gentle and very calming but at the same time there's this emotional turmoil and um you know we can talk about the music a little bit later but the music mm. was actually um i read up on the music finally and mm. it was purposely done to do those things uh. as as part of the as part of the of, of the show itself it's, mm. it's actually when the soundtrack was made it was made to be a um an experience not an actual soundtrack Right. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, the, yeah. The sense I got from, from the river fish feeding mm -hmm. was the tranquility of the scene on the placid surface mm -hmm. and the fact that below the surface there was this tremendous power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that water is this tremendous power that looks fairly placid. I mean, mm -hmm. it looks like, you know, it's going to be fun. You just splash around and it's great. It's no, yeah. no harm to you. And yet it is unstoppable in its force yeah and, and uh, moves yeah. things you know and, and here we have this story of people who are emotionally flowing forward like water yes in a, on an unstoppable mm -hmm. level and um, uh, one critical comment well, get mm -hmm. ahead, Brent, i was gonna say and yeah, they established at the beginning it is also a way to kill yourself yeah yes it is <laughs> you know although i didn't think that the bridge he was choosing was high enough to, <laughs> it's it's a yeah. matter of matter yeah. of distances mm -hmm. I found it very interesting, mm. psychologically, the idea that attractive people garner more attention mm. and that this story was not told by average looking people. Mm. Mm -hmm. Shoya is kind of average. He's got the little beady eyes kind of thing going mm -hmm. on. So he's sort of generic-ish. Mm -hmm. But all of the female characters involved in the show yeah. are all – attractive and they're they're eye grabbing oh i mean halfway through this threatens to turn into a harem series harem yeah movie. yeah and that's what i yeah. was really kind of and it, mm. you know it got me to thinking about the psychology of that where you had you place an attractive person mm -hmm. asking questions in a plaza mm. they get more responses yeah. than an average looking person and i'm, mm. I'm not quantifying what average or good looking <laughs> I, you know, whatever people's <laughs> personal preferences are mm. but objectively for these studies, it was somebody who was attractive versus somebody who was average looking. Mm. And the average looking mm. person did not garner the same attention. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I thought, this is a very interesting story because you've, you know, the story itself is amazing. What would happen if you made everybody normal, mm. everybody average looking? Mm -hmm. Would you get that same connectedness to Shoko if, you know, yeah. you, you didn't find her? You know, kawaii or moe or whatever you want to, you know, whatever or any of those right. girls. Could you would you know would you pay that much attention? And I, that's where I thought was very interesting their progression of Sahara. Mm -hmm. That she started off as as a sort yeah. of, you know a, a a chubby little little kid, mm -hmm. and that as she grew up, you know, mm -hmm. she, both emotionally presumably and and just in general. Mm -hmm. She elongated and became this very, you know, yeah. tall and attractive girl. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, you're you paying attention to her mm -hmm. because she's this tall, attractive girl like everybody else in there. And it's like, uh, the only person who really <laughs> wasn't attractive was the guy who looked from uh, – was uh, uh, not Hiro Hiro? But, Yeah, yeah the, mm. the little Boku no Hero kid. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nag Nagasuka. Mm -hmm. He yeah. – he had that averageness mm -hmm. that I'm not, you know what I mean? That just so, from the, from the watching perspective, I would be curious to know if you could make the same series with people who looked average like him, if it would have garnered the same kind of reactions and the same mm -hmm. kind of popularity. Mm -hmm. I hate Thank to say you, that, I, but. Well, no, there's, I think there's a, a point to what you're saying here yeah. because that particular character, I found that the reason why that he, uh, to me, Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why he was drawn that way was because when you look at the overall movie, where is the comedic effect coming from? It's coming from the mm -hmm. guy who has not looked like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's coming from the guy, and he's nature. He's, he's good-hearted, and he's nature. He's good-hearted, mm -hmm. natured, 
you know, he was never part of the whole, you know, mm. the, the whole mess. Yeah. And right. he was kind of outside of it. And, but he came into it and he was one of the first ones to, not the first ones, but he was one of the more easier ones to go back to Shoya and go, okay, I know you were crappy, but you know what? You're my best friend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that means yeah. something. And I think that might have been intentional. What you're pointing out is making all these people looking beautiful maybe making the beautiful people was was the point to make them average and to make this one character not average because of his stuntedness and his the way that he went through mm -hmm. the world well what i find so interesting is that um shoya and shoko well less so um uh shoya definitely basically all of the male characters look very much like their designs from the manga all of the female characters look like they came, they come out of kaon yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, know with the long dark yeah, hair, it's yeah. just kind of like, yeah. wow, like, yeah. biggest thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just, I just found that intriguing that they went in that direction because the, the, the male characters do feel a little bit more, I don't want to say normal, but, you know, um, um, uh, they do feel more like the kinds of kids you would meet in school, right? Um, whereas, Pretty much all the girls are really cute moe girls. Yeah. Um, and, and, and again, that, that there, there's an element of that in the manga too. But it's interesting that they kind of went in that direction. Not sure why. Um, well, I mean, I did, we, we know it, why. But well, I mean, there, it, there's a, a you know a much like the the metaphor to water being a powerful flowing mm. force. You know, it, it, I don't know. I haven't read it. I can't tell you. Mm. But it would be a curiosity to see whether somebody actively said. Sometimes beauty is perceived as an inherent good. Mm. That if you're beautiful, that you're yep. good, and that you do good things, and that good things are all around you. Mm -hmm. But beauty can also be poison. Mm. That, you know, mm. nightshade has a beautiful flower, <laughs> but it will kill you. Mm -hmm. And that here's these, you know, attractive girls, mm. and they are not good people. Yeah, totally. And I mean that that could be a, the easy subtext to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely with uh, Nauka. I mean, she's she's not a very pleasant person. Yeah. And one of the things that you oh. don't get across in the in the in the she movie. She works at a cat cafe. Yeah, true. Um, <laughs> you can treat cats nicely, but she yeah. can't treat human beings very nicely. Um, yeah. One of the things they 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 don't get across is that um, in in the manga she sees um, Shoko cleaning off Shoya's desk. And realizes that, um, or thinks that Shoko's in love with Shoya, and thus Shoko is muscling in on her territory, basically, right. because Naoka's been in love with him since they were, you know, six or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where a lot of that comes in is all of these, you know, kids seeing things and making assumptions about each other, and because Naoka is the pretty girl, you know, and everyone kind of fawns over her, and she can do no wrong she can lead the pack in in doing pretty much whatever yeah. yeah um and i do love the fact that ultimately one of the kind of one of the lessons is because and there's a line in there of you know what goes around comes around you know ultimately she is kind of the the outsider of the group right you know at yeah. the very end they're like we tolerate you we'll hang out with you but nobody really likes you anymore well it's also very interesting that shoya's former friends, his two buddies mm, yeah. from elementary school. Yeah. The one whom he runs into at the amusement park. <laughs> yeah. They they apparently show up as, I'm assuming, part of the rescue team? Yeah. But Shoya Nauka, jumps Nauka in the drink? Tell, Nauka, uh ah. tells him, mm -hmm. Shoya, that they, that those two rescued him out of the river. Yeah. But they, did, but they didn't want him to know that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and do you notice they never come around? No, no. Bueno san she comes, she's orbiting somewhere mm, in yeah, there, yeah. Mm. in her malicious orbitness. <laughs> um, and Kawaii, Kawaii, whatever the hell, that girl, <laughs> the girl that had the glasses, the yeah, yeah, yeah. hair. Blonde, yeah. Um, she has inserted herself and ignored what happened. Yeah. Great effect. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you see, like, some parts locking back in in kind of an interesting kind of way, but those two guys never lock back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And it's like, well, that's an interesting redemptive story in and of itself. Because mm-hmm. oena san she, you could argue, this is the closest to redemption she's going to get. Mm-hmm. Is to interact with Shoko. Even though it's not friendly. Even mm-hmm. though it's not going to be something where they're going to braid each other's hair and bake cookies. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> it's one of those things where at least she's coming to terms with what she what's happened, what she's done. And yet his what? male friends... There just seems to be nothing in there for them to have their reckoning with one another. Yeah. Um, oh, I, because, because I think they already had their reckoning. Yeah, they um, dumped him in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> they dumped him in the pond, but, but when you watch the sequence after he his failed suicide attempt, and then it goes into the Who is My Generation, which mm-hmm. does this great clip oh, of him yeah. showing, of showing Shoya as the big man on campus, and he is really just you know um he, he's bullying the one friend the, yeah. the one with the interesting mullet mm-hmm. the mullet yeah. and he's the one who's panting him and get him in the headlock and all this stuff yeah. and, mm-hmm. and the other friend the the guy with the with the two cools for flag school, <laughs> two, school, two cool for school eyes where yep. he's just like yeah i'm too hip for anything <laughs> um you know, he, he just kind of goes along, and I guess he once he decided that he didn't need to be the second fiddle anymore, mm. once Shoya got his just desserts, that particular little dynamic said, oh, you know what, Shoya, you're on the bottom now. Mm. And so he's on the top, so, you know, the, the flag boy is on top, mm-hmm. now he's not playing second, uh, second fiddle, and he's driving whatever little group he's in now. Mm-hmm. And they just totally left him. And yep. that's yeah. and and they the reason why they never came to a reckoning or never came to come back to mm. uh, to really be you know hey forgive us is because they were the victims of Shoya's bullying for so mm-hmm. long they just said that's a good point we're the bullies now yeah mm-hmm. so they're the bullies and the reason why they don't want Shoya to know that they mm. rescued him was that you know, we did it just because you were hurt. And mm-hmm. it would be bad on us to not do this. I mean, I could totally see them doing what Shoya did, which was, oh, look, did it go Shoya? Mm-hmm. Boom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's still alive. Did we do anything? Poke him with a stick. Eh, mm-hmm. You know, but they, in the end, they actually go, yeah, well, I guess we're obligated to do this. So mm-hmm. you know, they pull him out of the river, but they don't want any thanks. They don't want anything yeah. from him. Mm-hmm. They're, they're like, we or is, or is that in and of itself their reconciliation maybe that's it, that's mm-hmm. it. maybe yeah. they say okay we're all equal now. pulling mm-hmm. him out of the drink says okay you know what? we're even yeah, that's we're it even. we don't want to yeah. talk to you again we don't have anything to do with you but that's it mm-hmm. you know we traded back for what we did to you mm-hmm. now we've cut we've done this stuff and there you are yeah yeah uh-huh. um speaking of 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 that i wanted to, to bring up something I, I don't want to turn this into you know manga versus anime um oh that can be interesting um uh, there's one thing that the manga did that I wish, th- wish they'd kept in the anime. And there's one thing the film did that I think was better than the manga. Um, in the manga, when Shoya first goes to meet Shoko um, in junior high to give her the notebook back. Um, to sort at of, the school. At the school, yeah, to, to sort of, to, you know, okay. meet, yeah, that final moment. Um, at the end of that conversation, she does this. As he's about to walk away, which, if you've seen the film, means be seeing you later. Yeah. yeah, and that is what keeps him from going back to com- commit suicide, because he realizes, uh, crap, she wants to talk to me again. I can't commit suicide until I've resolved that thread. Essentially, I put myself in that situation. Uh, you know, um, it's it's kind of unfair to then leave her hanging. I have to go back and talk to her again. Turns out, and I forget if this is explicitly stated or just heavily, um, you know, uh, implied. When they had that conversation, she realized something was up. And she deliberately did that so that he would not go do something stupid. So she literally saves his life initially. Huh. Interesting. And that was one of the things is that, you know, and it's, it's one of the things that, again, you know, it's not a, a plot hole, but watching the film, I was like, okay, he's done all of his things. He's given it back to her. He's had this awkward conversation, you know, and then he decided not to kill himself. Like what exactly was going on there? I felt that was a little bit stronger motivation um, of understanding that, that, that thing. 
But then, I like the ending of the movie better than the manga. I'm going to say that. Okay. Okay. Um, Well, Brent, Brent, going back to to the idea Mm -hmm. of her saving him with See You Later. In Japanese culture, you have the idea of the sort of unfulfilled Mm. and death, Mm -hmm. which then leads to you being a wandering spirit. Yes, yes. So, Mm -hmm. culturally and and theologically, if there was an indicator of something that was unresolved mm-hmm. it's not stated in that but you know the concept conceptually mm-hmm. going and offing yourself when you have something that is unresolved will burden you mm-hmm. and you may never get into the re, you know reincarnation cycle mm-hmm. because you're going stuck because of your regret mm-hmm. no, i yeah. think you got something there because you know in the movie uh you know his mother makes a big deal about it too mm-hmm. about the calendar the calendar's ripped after yeah. that. But mm-hmm. There's no more calendar yep. after that. Mm-hmm. And he, and there's that whole sequence of him going to his job. Thank you for letting me yeah. have this job and just paying the money, paying his money back. Yeah, paying his back mom back. 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 And all oh, yeah. Resolving I all. I think you got a point there. I think you got a point. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a good point. I was just reading well, to see that, if that comes up or not, but I didn't see it anywhere. anywhere. Well, it's just in, in just observing that yeah. part because I didn't no, think I anything more about that. The, the depth, though, that you got out of that, mm. that dovetails in very, very <laughs> well with the cultural aspects mm-hmm. that, you know, necessarily we wouldn't just off the street know watching it in a theater somewhere. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's interesting conceptually. Mm-hmm. Um, and the manga ends with them at graduation. Um, and so it's sort of a, hey, we're all heading off into our lives post school. And this is going to happen to this person. And, you know, this person is going off to this, you know, pursue this career and so forth and so on. And it ends okay. with um, Sho- uh, Shoko and Shoya basically hand in hand going through a door saying, you know, I'm looking forward to our future together. You know, whatever that may end up being, wherever we end up. And that's how the manga ends. And I felt that the, the imagery of the film ending of him finally, you know, Taking the hands off of his you know, listening, yeah. yeah, voice, all blah blah blah, um, and finally opening himself to, up to the world was a much more satisfying sort of ending to that. It's nice in the manga yeah. to say, "Oh, she's going to do that, he's going to do that." You know, those that's where they're going. But I thought just, um, and again, film different than manga. Um, I, I think for a two-hour experience, it's more satisfying to have that kind of button on the end of everything. That's what I was talking about earlier about having a, a good payoff. Mm-hmm. And that that was it, because, you know, throughout the thing that you are purposely annoyed by the fact that he's decided to blank out everybody. Yeah. I mean, just imagine just, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. going, going through life like that, like <laughs> a weird kaiju, you know, you know like and and, you know, and just going and at the end, and like there's a great scene where they're at the, the park and he's looking around and he goes, wait a minute. It, it, and it's really dumb. yeah oh yeah, and yeah. I, am, 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 I, am i allowed because i'm such a freaking horrible person yeah am I, is it okay to be happy is it okay mm-hmm. to enjoy these people around me and just to be here and and not doing this mm-hmm. to them and just just being okay oh is this okay yeah for me then of course you know 30 seconds later, you have the Ferris wheel. Yeah. You're just like, oh, my uh, heart's so And I love the fact that well, I, I, that, now, that uh, uh, Shoya knows what is going to happen in that Ferris wheel ride. Like, when those two get in, he's like, oh, crap. Everything is going to come down now. And he's right. Which Yuzu knew. Oh, just yeah. take my camera yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yep. boy. Can we talk about... Which I was kind of surprised that didn't end up on the internet like oh, yeah. off the bridge. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, not, um, I, so I don't know if you yeah. noticed this. Um, um, Yuzu did not get in trouble for stealing her sister's shampoo. She got in trouble for posting that video online. Rio really died. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah she, Shoko was uh, not um, happy about that. No. One of the interesting things I thought about the the X's on the face, the mm, Xing out yeah. of the classmates, teachers, etc., mm-hmm. um, is it's the it's part of Shoya's progression mm. mm-hmm. that 
some of it is his desire naturally to disappear mm -hmm. because of everything that's going on. But it's also his progression from the the manner in which he dehumanized Shoko. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that the X's on people's faces are a means of his escape, but also a means of him dehumanizing those around him. Yes, so absolutely. So it makes mm -hmm. them not people mm -hmm. because people hurt him. Yep, yep. So yep. that as these X's peel off, he's catching a glimpse of people. He's mm -hmm. starting, you know, starting to figure it out and then everything sort of snaps back in again and you know mm -hmm. you, you you see that sort of vacillation in that but you know it's looking at it it's like you, you really sort of start to figure out there it's like those x's are not just purely you know plot driven for this little thing mm -hmm. it's the fact that he himself did not value the humanity of mm -hmm. those around him yep. and even at that stage where he's like deeply troubled with what has happened he's still struggling against the dehumanization of, of the, those around him that is and he's slowly you know i mean shoko is the focus of that where she is humanized mm -hmm. and then slowly people become humanized out from that it is one of the most brilliant things about this is that it is not simply saying you know um it is basically saying that bullying goes deeper Right. Yeah. That behavior has all sorts of psychological ramifications, which will out. And that is how they out in him in this very unhealthy reaction to what was going on. And, and again, in contrast with, uh, with Shoko, you know, Shoko remains open to the world despite all the horrible things. And I don't know. And I'm, I'm sure you guys, you know, connected with this. But, uh, you know, Shoko obviously came from some other school where she was bullied and then had to leave and then went to another yeah. school where she was bullied and had to leave but she still shows up and she still I mean, another thing that's in the manga not in the, in the, in the anime but I, I think kind of comes across is that she smiles because that's the best way she can remain open hope yeah it, it's hope, and hope. It's, yeah, yeah hope, hope. exactly but, but then then there's the ferris wheel right where she yeah. goes to Noka and goes, no, 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 you don't understand. You don't understand. It's okay. It's okay. I'm saying I'm sorry because I hate myself. Mm -hmm. And, yes. you know, when she says that and, and you're just like, you're crushed because all you see up until that point, not all you see, but mm -hmm. what you see from her is smiling. I'm sorry. It's okay. You know, use of the hands. How, how about that, that, when she... Yeah. How about when she's cleaning his desk off? Yeah, yeah. and she's fighting him. Shoya oh. comes oh. in, and he's like, "You're disgusting. Get off me!" Mm -hmm. And she throws him down, and she's just saying, "I'm doing my best." Yeah, and it's just like, yeah, you just wanna wow. go, that's why you just want to go click. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was oh. I'm oh, for Clem I'm just talking about it. No kidding. Like, yeah. No. <laughs> and, and that's the thing is that, is that that smile is her shield. It is her front yeah. to other yeah. people to to yeah. seem nice, to seem like she like it is. Everything. And there, there's again stuff in the manga, and, and I, I keep referring to the manga not because the manga is all important, but because if you want to go deeper on this, it is there in the manga um, about how like she feels fake. That she is constantly putting on this smile. She's constantly trying to be nice, knowing that everyone is talking about her behind her back. Yeah. You know, she 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 is aware of all like of coming this. Up, coming up with a notebook. What are you talking uh, about? Mm, oh, yeah. oh yeah. That that was that was a tough moment. Oh, oh God, yeah, yeah. Being so aware of exactly what they're talking about. Yeah, and and I, yet, and oh. and I also wanted to. Um, <laughs> praise the movie for its perfectly stereotypical homeroom teacher I yes yeah. so yes. To Captain Oblivious yeah. <laughs> so to his interest uh, well you know I got mad yes I, I yes and I got mad at that because I'm just like going you're the ED teacher you're, you're the damn teacher you, you're supposed to these are they're not your kids but they're your kids you know they're, they're in your classroom <laughs> Here's this girl that you that you know is deaf, and you see it, and you, oh. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Up, or, you yes, know, or you know, show you. Up, you read the next uh, line. line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, whatever. But I don't care. And the only emotion you get out of him is when he slams the chalkboard. Mm. Yeah, because Shoya, uh, Shoya is not quick enough to to 
to just say it out loud. And, mm-hmm. and, and basically, he just wants this to end. Yes. He wants yes. the peace in his classroom. Mm-hmm. He wants Shoko to leave. He wants mm-hmm. Shoya to shut up. He just yeah. wants everything yep. to go back to normal. Oh, the reaction of his, like the look on his face when he pushes his glasses up when the sign language teacher is in the classroom. Oh, he's just standing so on the side. He's like, mm-hmm. yep. And you can just see he's just mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, his, you know, his incredibly deep and loving you know, explanation to their classroom that Shoya is, uh, that Choco is not going to be there anymore. You yeah. know. Yeah. So uh, Shoko's not coming back. Moving along, you know. Like, okay, <laughs> clearly that was important to you. Uh, yeah, was but that is the thing. So angry. Yeah, and and that's the thing. And again, so that, it gets back to the fact. And can we talk about Yuzu for a second, uh, little sister? Because um, yes, yeah. I think she's or little brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think she's one of the most tragic characters in all of this, because she is obsessed with Shoko. Seeing the trauma that her older sister went through is something, and oh, and again, I got verklempt when you, you know, she's taking down all the photos of the dead animals, and she's saying, yeah. you know, I what took, else can I do? Yes, this was the and only way like, I could think of as a you know ten year old to prevent my sister from committing suicide. Oh, it's a hell of a burden to be responsible for her sister's life. Yeah, she took like, herself out of school, a ten year old. Yeah. Took yeah. herself out of school to, to, to watch over her, her sister. sister. Yeah. And, and and that was just, you know, you don't, in real life, adults do that. Right. Adults give up their things mm-hmm. to, to look out for their parent, their sibling, mm-hmm. or their child. Not a 10 year old freaking girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and so then, you know, the of course, you know, the, the moment when the grandmother's just having a, like a, a drink yeah. with, with Yuzu mm-hmm. and, and you know you you know what's coming from a mile away you can mm-hmm. see it and and you're just sitting there and she's just trying to make trying to explain to the girl it's it's okay you don't mm-hmm. have to do this you have your own life to lead yeah. and when Yuzu is just like oh no I'm not doing it. I'm just you know whatever mm-hmm. grandma's not fooled she goes oh you're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're you're a good granddaughter yeah and, one and you know at the end of that scene Yuzu, for I think the only time in the movie, is suddenly a kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and she's just enjoying Do you want a manju? Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. You know? Like, uh, oh. Wow. And then, you know, the very next scene, she's in that school uniform. Um, and I love and how well they make that school uniform look alien on her. Yeah. It's the, so big. Yeah, yeah. And it's just such a shock. Why is she. Wait. You know, it, it is that 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 processing. You go, they're like, wait, why is she wearing? Wait, why wasn't she wearing that? What's oh, yeah. been going yeah. on here? You know, and it's like, yeah, yep, yeah. Oh. Oh. yeah. It was a hell of a film. Hell of a film, definitely. Good Absolutely. Movie. Um, I want to see if there's anything else I wanted to bring up. Um. <laughs> um oh, so did. You guys, did you watch the English dub or did you Ooh. watch? Because I want to. Yeah. JJ, did you watch the English dub? I watched the German dub. Oh, okay. I heard it's a good dub. It sounded yeah. like an ang- it sounded like an angry bar fight. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. No, so I watched I watched the uh, the sub. Oh, sub, okay. okay. I watched the English okay. dub. Okay. Okay. So English, in the is the English dub, dub good? Well, there's an interesting thing about it. Actually, it is. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, surprisingly surprisingly good um the what's what's the guy's name mm. robbie damon mm. who does the voice for um for the older shoya mm-hmm. uh, okay. does, does a really really good job with yeah it. um even the young kid was it ryan shanahan mm. my notes here but the most interesting thing is is that when you watch this movie and the girl who does shoko lexi cowden mm. cowden cowden is deaf herself yeah. So when you watch the dub and you hear her voice, it really does sound like she's deaf because the voice actress is deaf. Mm-hmm. Right. It's an, actual, it's an actual thing. So and it works works very very well, and it provided one of the few comedic parts of the whole movie where they're trying to sing. <laughs> the, yes. You know, and she yeah. misses the the cue, mm-hmm. and she just starts singing, and you're just like, oh no. Yeah. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, she she is 
excellent in that. And I also appreciate the fact that, you know, when she's a kid, she's not very good at speaking. And as she grows older, like she gets better at that and more There's skilled no at it. Um, it. The other you know comedic moment in the film, as 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 sad as it can be, um, is when she confesses to to show you, and he oh, has he, no idea what she's like talking about. Yeah. What about the moon? <laughs> like looking around, like oh, and, and, no. and you just kind of reach through the screen. <laughs> yeah, he did a dope and, slap right there. And it's another great example. You know, being a sh- obviously a shojo storyline, you know that is the kind of thing that is so often done to clueless characters. And I love that it's done to somebody who is trying his hardest, right? Yep. Like there's nothing else. Well, I don't know about that. Um, um, he is very open. He wants to know what she's saying. And it's just it's just not there. And again, it gets back to that thing where this is a an impressively realistic film. It's not, you know, it's not sugarcoating these experiences. It's when you have, you know, when you can't hear, it makes things difficult for you. Yeah. Well, it's what makes it interesting what you're saying at the end of the manga. Mm. Yeah. Shoya has some deep problems. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's evident through the whole entire film. Yeah. But even though he is working on those problems, he still has some very deep problems. Mm-hmm. Shoko has some very deep problems. Mm-hmm. The concept that they hold hands and walk out a doorway. I'm glad the film didn't end like that <laughs> because uh, the film, is, yeah. you know, them coming together and coming to understand one another. And then, mm-hmm. you know, some of the other people around them understanding the circumstances and situation. This is not the, the roadmap to we're going to get married, have kids and everything's fine. Right. This more than likely would be the roadmap to we've come to terms with this. Mm-hmm. And we can engage with one another. And, and we, to be you know fair, I mean? to be fair, that is the tone of that ending. It, it is not yeah. everything is good. It is more uh, well. Let me see if I can give you. We're yeah, but hand holding is is a tantamount to pregnancy. So I mean, <laughs> actually, that's a good point. Are they actually holding hands? Um, they are. Wow, that is. You're right. That is actually. So, uh, so they're pregnant and married. Yeah, sure, exactly. Right <laughs> um, I mean, I just. What more do you need to to, to see? Right? Oh yeah, that's that's yeah, that's, yeah. that's indicative no, of the happy that's ending. That's yeah, mm-hmm. uh, not um, that happy ending. Not, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's the thing is that, know. and and I I will give the other, and I you know I think this is a reasonable choice for an ending because you basically she is giving them a a positive ending, looking towards a future where they can at least they're at least aware of their problems and can work through them. Right. Um, right. Um, but not sugarcoating and saying everything's going to be happy now. Um, but still, it just it, it felt like an odd. It felt like a very classic shojo ending to something that is not a yes. classic shojo story. Yeah. yeah, it is far more complex than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm trying to see what other, well, some of the other notes that I actually have. speaking of comedy, there are two comedic beats um, during the big climactic scene on the bridge when Shoya comes running up. And I was surprised at how well they worked. Um, where Shoya comes running up, and I'm trying to remember now exactly what they were. Because um, um, I know um, he says something, and she laughs at it. Um, and then she says something, and um, uh, that, make, that makes him laugh, which is kind of, kind of an odd moment. And, the, you know... I was glad to see they they put in a little bit of levity there of just you know, a little bit of the characters having a moment to kind of react to each other and then get back into the to the depth of the drama. Um, there's just you know it was it was a and it, again getting back to this whole pacing editing thing. Um, I, I was impressed that this would be a, a, a movie that would be easy to get maudlin to just be, yeah. you know, yeah. tears the Waking entire time. and depressing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they managed to, to weave that nicely. All right. Um, yeah. One of the notes I had was about literally the fall from the apartment. Mm. Yeah. Um, and how his attempt to... so hard to watch. Yeah, yeah. his attempt mm-hmm. to save Shoko mm. is... Um, it's the sort of... It's the completion of Shoya's internal collapse yeah and that that fall is if you if you want to you know theologically make it as as a Mm -hmm. you know akin to the fall of lucifer 
Hmm. You know, he's falling from this height. Mm-hmm. This sinner is falling from the height, and what he ends up is falling into water, mm-hmm. symbolic of washing away of sins, mm-hmm. and he emerges from the water into his new life. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where he saved her mm-hmm. in this, in again, his journey, the hero's journey, you know, he's now been washed of some of his burden. Mm-hmm. Psychologically, he's not escaped from it, but he's washed from it enough to be able to function, mm-hmm. and then he can move forward in the new life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it was that... a real big reset moment for him. Yeah. Um, when he falls in and goes, the, the water's cold, and then he starts oh, bleeding. Okay. Mm-hmm. And warm. And, he goes, yeah. warm. and warm. Yeah. And then he just kind of fades to black. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, at that point, on the sofa as I'm screaming no, 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 and mm. wondering if my neighbors are going to call the 911. <laughs> and, and, and screaming at the at the television, thinking Shoko's going to jump, and you know he, he kind of saves her, and he falls himself. I literally yeah. was like, oh, great, she's going to jump down in with him, too. Mm. Now it's mm-hmm. going to end. This is well, I thought for a second he was going to swing her into the porch below, because her feet were just oh. near the edge of the oh, porch yeah. below. I'm mm-hmm. like, Okay, porch. But, yeah. <laughs> Pull a death note. Um, you know, throw yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you notice that when Shoya's mother meets with Shoko's mother, mm. the moment when the oh. when when Shoya's mom comes back and she's like, "Are you ready to go after the whole hearing aid thing?" and she mm-hmm. gave the money to Shoko's mom. Mm-hmm. Did you notice anything particularly ear related mm-hmm. in that yep. moment? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I thought I thought that was an interesting, uh, an eye for an eye kind of moment where it's like mm-hmm. you know your son did this and caused this trauma, so here you go. Yeah, there's your trauma. Now mm-hmm. you can live with it. It's like, and I'm and I'm trying to remember if 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 that's how it went down in the manga or I I can very much see that turning into a thing where uh, Shoya's mother says you know you know. What can I do, basically? Um, yeah. And they said I can't do anything. Okay, yeah. like here you go. Um, yeah, yeah, I love Shoya's mother. She is such yeah. a wonderful mother character, um, especially yeah. in that scene where she kind of breaks down over the the, the bacon and eggs, um, yeah. because she's she, and I I love how she is like basically. So you tried to kill yourself, and tries to be as light as possible and then as soon as he admits to it mm, how dare you you know just all those motherly yeah. instincts just rise well, to the floor level one to level ten in yeah a banana second. i found it very interesting too in the in the movie that if you notice shoya's sister she as only me. ever shows up as the back of a head mm-hmm. or when she's holding marie her daughter Literally, Marie's head <laughs> entirely covers her face. So mm-hmm. all you see is she's facing the camera, but all you see is her hair and, like, her shoulders and stuff as she's holding the child in front of her. Mm. And it's like, why is that? You know what I mean? I, I, I was not able to sort of, like, grind out what's the significance of that. I know raising Marie is, like, it's it's showing the sort of that Shoya has a caring mm. part of him. Yeah. He's not dead inside he picks marie up when she's eating and he puts her down on the floor so she can go around he picks her up at the at school and takes mm-hmm. her to the park but you know he he, he genuinely under that bully exterior or not bully exterior that yeah. bully experience mm-hmm. he genuinely has caring mm-hmm. and yeah. sympathy and he's capable of that yeah so what is is the is not having the sister a, as a functional character in that mm. Is that to sort of exit out a person that would be the caring mother for this child and giving him that opportunity so that, you know, you know, putting this down on paper, looking, it's like, well, there's his mother and his sister taking care of the baby mm. would put them all in that camp over there. And that he right. as a guy wouldn't have the uh, the comfort zone to express mm. his caring nature. Mm-hmm. So we need to take the sister and make her go do something else and that way he can that we can show that kind of connectiveness with the baby yeah i I think narratively i think narratively that is very much the point um i suspect and again i don't remember that um her not showing up is kind of a running gag in the manga um that she's you know she's there she's around like you know like just that, that, like her face is never shown is kind of a running gag right right. she's around but you know we're just never going to manage to see her 
Um, and we see the Brazilian yeah. uh, Pedro. Uh, brother-in-law for like a split second. I, I, wish, I, could, I, I wish we could do the, the facial. I was just like, going, whoa, what, 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 was, what was that? <laughs> yeah, dude <laughs> leans in. You're like, who the hell is this guy? Just <laughs> yeah, open up the curtain. There's this, this dude just, you know, doing barbells and stuff. And doing then, reps. You know, Mm-hmm. And Rats and he closes it, and you see him one other time, and he actually speaks. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, "What the heck was that about?" But then, but it is part of the narrative to to build yeah. off that. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, he's in a unique family situation that yeah. requires empathy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and who knows? And um, you know, maybe that's one of the things that made him realize, you know, um, what he needed. You know, maybe having this little girl around made him realize, yeah. oh, wait, I care about her. Why couldn't I have cared about that, you know, yeah. that girl in grade school? Um, but no, and I, I love the fact that this film is very much about um, you know, what goes around comes around. That, that yeah. you know, there are consequences to your, to your actions and they, you know, you can't take them back. Um, but that also it is about um, sort of self-actualization that, you know, so many of the characters move forward by moving forward by doing something actively in their lives to address what's going on knowing that can't solve everything but it's a heck of a lot better than doing nothing yeah. um and uh and there's there's very much this this sort of um um another thing i, I find interesting not, not to take this on too long um is that there's there are a lot of self-limits in this story of characters saying this is all i can do right um, right. Of of Shoya saying, you know, well, I can't actually. It, you know, it's like one of the fundamental tensions. You know, I could no, never actually have a relationship with Shoko. That is off the table. Um, but what I can do is show up and be nice. And what that leads to is a relationship with Shoko, right? You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and just all of these different things. It, it, Shoko saying, you know, yeah, but I hate myself, and and you know, seeing herself as very much this. Um, um, not so much a victim, but unable to to deal with the situation in her life. And then part of her growing up is dealing with those more actively, is going after Shoya, um, you know, actually uh, engaging uh, with these scenarios. Um, not that, you know, all this is her fault or anything, but it was interesting seeing how many different characters. Um, the, uh, the, the, the best friend, you know, um, it was his... You know, what led that X to that X coming off his face is the fact that he went and found his bike. He spent yeah, hours yeah. looking for that bike. And it's like, oh, wow, you care about me. That that means something. Right. Wow. Well, it's that humanizing aspect that he's not just, you know, another faceless thing out yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, cool. Anything else we wanted to talk about? Any other mm-hmm. details? Mm-hmm. Speaking of music, I, I, I did want to call out and I wanted to get your thoughts on this, Steve. I found it really interesting that that fight sequence between Shoko and Shoya as grade schoolers has this very yes. calm piano music background. So when you... When, well, so that's so you can cry more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you feel more. Um, so the guy... Let me go to my notes here. So the guy who, who wrote the score is mm-hmm. actually, he is considered to be a uh, writer of electronic body music. Interesting. Um, so, so take that as you will. Okay. Um, the, the soundtrack, this is kind of interesting. The soundtrack mm-hmm. is uh, 62 tracks. Um, that's on the, on the actual double D- CD um, soundtrack wow. that you can buy. Oh, wow. But there's actually, but there's actually 82 tracks the movie dang yeah and so what he there's a lot of music while you're crying you don't yeah (laughs) well well, part of it the part of it is that actually you're not supposed to hear the music and that's actually one point of him of his um and that is by the way the name of it is a shape of light colon a silent voice the movie original soundtrack this says if you're you're looking for that's what it is the average runtime of each song is like about a minute Wow. Uh, okay. A couple of the, the couples are uh, two minutes. Now, what's interesting is that um, on the, the album, there are three. Each each track is noted by three letters. Okay. And 
the three letters mean something. So like mm. there's one that's heartbeat that equals heartbeat. And it's actually <clears throat> the, the, the tone of the music is just supposed to be as they're looking at each other and the tone is just, mm. duh, 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 duh. it's just the, you know, the heartbeat. So all of this is just about how the music is supposed to set up the tension or the lack of tension. Right. In the movie itself. Now, when it goes into three letters INV, as because he is actually, and I actually know this, this this piece of work by Johann Sebastian Bach, which is um, invention number one in C major. Okay. Um, it's a total rip. Uh, so okay. there's uh, so the first CD has about I think like ten um, variations of that piece of music. Mm. He attributes it to to Bach, by the way, mm -hmm. but. Hmm it's it's in there so the fight scene the reason why that's so calming is because it's supposed to you're supposed to on the one hand see the violence of this happening and music is supposed to be her innocence and in telling him mm. stupid fool i your friend i want to be your friend this is yeah. what this is all about and i don't know how to tell you and i'm so angry and frustrated and you're just not getting it please be my friend no, and that's that's what that. So it's uh, there's that chaotic mess going on. Calmness is just basically just in contradiction. It's supposed yeah. she's supposed to be calm, but the music is, mm -hmm. but she isn't. Interesting. And she's being chaotic. She's yeah. being chaotic. And so the whole whole soundtrack wow. is just just these little things, and you actually have to pinpoint them into the movie you have to watch the movie mm -hmm. to understand the music because the music is supposed to be the movie wow. it's supposed to be around her and a lot of it is about her it's about how oh, she views okay. and, looks at the world mm -hmm. and how she is trying to project her herself her image of here's my smile i'm sorry let's all be friends can't we i'm hurting mm -hmm. so bad inside mm -hmm. and i just but you know of it right yeah mm -hmm. friends you me you know mm -hmm. that so all those things that's a lot of it is about her mm, okay wow wow that's great yeah. that that's that's really insightful um it definitely definitely makes sense you know it definitely comes together yeah. wow there's a lot to unpack from this film there is a lot to unpack <laughs> from this film there is yeah. it is a that is a film yeah. um cool yeah those are my thoughts um, thank you guys very much for all of your thoughts.